Hi, my name is Ed Loftus. I'm a gastroenterologist at Mayo Clinic and I specialize in the care of patients with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Many of us busy clinicians uh, have noticed this curious phenomenon where uh, people with IBD seem to flare at the same time. So you'll have a month where things are fairly quiet and then the next month you'll get a whole slew of phone calls of patients reporting increased symptoms. And in fact, some studies have suggested that there's a seasonal variation to IBD flares. Now, exactly when those flares occur seem to vary from study to study. So some have suggested that patients with IBD flare in the spring and the fall. Other studies have suggested it's more often in the summer. But there was an interesting article that just was published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology by a group from Switzerland that might shed a clue on this curious phenomenon. So what they did was they correlated uh, maximum temperature data each day and correlated it to hospitalizations in their local university hospital uh, for IBD, infectious gastroenteritis, and then for a control group they had patients that were being admitted for non-infectious, uh, non-IBD type gastrointestinal conditions. And they defined a heat wave as six days in a row where the maximum temperature was nine degrees Fahrenheit or five degrees centigrade higher than the average temperature. And what they found was that there was a correlation that was statistically significant. So when a heat wave occurred, IBD patients were five percent more likely to be hospitalized uh, than if a heat wave had not occurred. And when they looked at it by day of the heat wave, in other words, the cumulative effect, the risk went up by about 5% each day. So what does that mean? That's hard to kind of wrap your mind around. So if in a given time period, 20 patients would normally be hospitalized, a 5% increase would mean that 21 patients were being hospitalized. So the effect in and of itself is not huge, it's somewhat weak, but it is statistically significant. So they also found that hospitalizations for infectious gastroenteritis, things like Salmonella, Campylobacter, Shigella, those also increased by 5% during heat waves. Whereas the control group, which was sort of a mix of various chronic gastrointestinal conditions, they did not see any change in admission rates. Uh, during heat waves for these conditions. So what could explain this? Well, the, the most obvious culprit is bacteria. We know that if you're culturing bacteria, if you alter the heat, uh, the temperature, uh, you can change the growth rate of the bacteria. And perhaps the alterations in our ambient temperature uh, have effects on the growth of intestinal bacteria in the colon and in the small bowel, and that this could somehow influence both uh, infectious gastroenteritis, but also uh, flares of inflammatory bowel disease. Most, most of our leading hypothesis suggests that bacteria play some role in the uh, generation of inflammation in these conditions. So anyway, more, more work obviously needs to be done. We need to see confirmation of this in other studies, but it's sort of a fascinating um, a clue as to what may be causing these seasonal flare-ups of inflammatory bowel disease.